All right. Welcome back to another episode of Spring Legion Podcast. I'm your host, Hunter Farrier, joined today by Chase Farrier. Um, for those that don't know, my middle brother and a pretty regular guest here on the show. And we're going to kind of be going over a few uh, key points of the season on his season and, and kind of wrapping up mine as well. Um, but first things first, just on our end, um, this will probably be the last storytelling type of episode for a little while as we get into the off season and things have kind of shifted to uh, to this bi-weekly uh, phenomenon, which I'm not sure I'm too crazy about. Um, kind of went crazy there for a week, not having one to put out there for y'all. And we might get into some more weekly stuff or, or change it up here and there throughout the summer. But um, but for the most part, kind of the plan, just to keep y'all in the loop and keep y'all informed on what the, the intentions are for the podcast when we're not in turkey season, uh, it's going to be a little more specific topics, uh, some some interviews with some with some people that are knowledgeable on those certain topics, and and we really do need y'all to kind of help you know direct the uh, the way of which the the topics will go, whether that be anything from predation control to prescribed burns to habitat management to you know, what's in turkey vest, which calls work best, and then these scenarios, woodsmanship type stuff, uh, finding turkeys publicly and privately and all of that stuff. And then, you know, if there's ever a day where y'all want us to talk anything besides turkey, y'all let us know and we'll give it our best shot. But then we'll really have Chase in here because he knows a little bit more about the uh, the remaining season more than more than I do. So, um, but, um, but so y'all reach out and, and kind of let us know a direction y'all want us to uh, kind of take those certain topics, you know, anything specific or heck, we could have a like a series on, you know, uh, just overall conservation stuff or a series on nothing but woodsmanship type stuff and, and just get different people that are just gurus on the subject end to, to talk about it or phone out to them or something like that. And, and any suggestions y'all have on guests shoot those to us and we'll reach out and see if we can make something happen. Um, we've got a, a few in mind that we've already reached out to that we kind of got on the, on the front burner, but there's a lot of, a uh, lot of opportunity between now and next March. So we'll get on that. And then, um, yeah, so for the last really designated, I'm going to say designated storytelling episode of the, of the year, because I know there's going to be a lot of rabbit holes in the future. Then we kind of dive off into some specifics and some stories, but but um, wanted to uh, wanted to get chasing here a while back. I feel like we just kind of we never got on the same page on some you know just logistics, even though we are brothers and live literally what five minutes apart. Maybe um, this is I feel like the soonest he could have probably got in here to tell it, but it's a it's a story. It's a Mississippi Eastern he shot earlier this year and. Um, just wanted to get him in here that that same week or the week after that and it just never happened and then things started snowballing on the on the to-do list and wanted to while we got him to, to kind of give that rundown it's a pretty pretty cool little story i'd say of uh some cutting it pretty close there at the last second on a few things but um but you can dive into that and then we'll wrap up the second half of that little grand slam tour i did and, and kind of see where that takes us Sounds good. Um, pretty much to kick off my season, um, I started it at that uh, wildlife. What was it called? Uh, the invitation. At the yeah, whatever. The it was Long called. Beard Invitational. <laughs> yeah. I forgot myself. At the Long Beard Invitational. Yeah, there you go. And um, pretty much just kicked it off with my good friend um, Taylor McNair. Mm -hmm. She, me, and her hunted a few times together. Um, I've probably talked about her before a handful of times and hung out around around me enough, you know, about me and her turkey hunting. So um, pretty much just kicked it off. Work was slammed all week. Couldn't get out and scout as much as I wanted to between rain and work. Um, so pretty much showed up to a place blind. Um, it was some private land. We, we had, you know, we had permission to hunt and all this stuff. Um, started out really slow right there at daylight couldn't didn't hear much on the limb um and turns out we were just on the wrong end of the property they were not where they were the last time i hunted it three years ago yeah so that we can't get up there and scout too much right yes 
so I, I we pretty much just walk, walked around and worked around until we finally got in hearing range of them um and of course they're on the very back of the property and um we get up to a, a field where you know i'm like all right well they're in the woods on the other end of this field we need to cut across it's starting to get daylight didn't have enough time to really make the loop i wanted to and of course there was a hen on the edge of the field and uh about a quarter of the way across the field she busted which you know to follow the goblin stopped and yeah pretty much the only turkeys we had to hunt that day were uh not there anymore and um so i'm sitting there scratching my head don't know what to do we do a little quick setup get one fire back up about eight o'clock i'd say mm -hmm. and he he was hand up just you know he did didn't want to work didn't this guy would wear probably four times at us five times at us and you know i thought maybe we could work him and it just didn't happen um i guess to follow that we we bounced around the property a good bit trying to strike another turkey you know, i guess a satellite bird that we hadn't heard we just were looking for one um mm -hmm. pretty much did that until about lunchtime ran made some made uh made some sandwiches threw them in our vest um and then we ran over to a little small section we have permission on nothing there so it's i mean it's getting one o'clock now and we've heard one turkey gobble yeah. a handful of times and and we're starting to get a little concerned in all honesty so at about one o'clock we we run back to where we heard those other birds and I said we just wanted to sit it out pretty much told taylor we you know we kind of set up shop there and where i thought they may be around that same field we busted them out of that morning um but they were on in the woods i didn't say this earlier they were probably on in the woods three or four hundred yards got one yeah that hen just was on the edge um but so we set up kind of on the edge of the field and um just kind of waited and waited and waited taylor ended up falling asleep and um i wasn't far from it in all honesty and about three three o'clock probably um is when it started getting eventful um in all honesty somebody was sighting in a gun or shooting a shotgun or something um and after about the third shot i heard the turkey gobble mm -hmm. way off way in there and i and all I see, I couldn't even tell if it was a bird or not, a turkey or not. Almost not thought of somebody hollering for cows or something. I mean, we were on a cow yeah. pasture, so I, I was like, that wasn't a turkey. You know, I've been sitting there for over an hour, two hours with nothing. I broke out every call I had, couldn't strike nothing up. So, um, after about the third noise I heard, I finally realized it was a gobble. And so I woke Taylor up, and <laughs> she didn't know what the heck was going on, but. Um, I said, you know, we, we got to either make a move or get a plan together. Let's, you know, kind of talked her through what I had in mind. Um, and this is when it got pretty wiry, I guess it was, we had to, we had to be back at the, the check-in at, at five yeah. to, to meet up with everybody. That and just our, to refresh on kind of what he, what he's talking about, that invitational was one of those just kind of a friend group of ours kind of constructed this little yeah. turkey tourney deal where you know everybody that already hunts around here we just meet up um the night before to kind of hang out and then and um and they do like a little calcutta type deal or something like that i think and, and everybody just hangs out and sees people we haven't seen in a while i think we probably see us and i might have touched on this you know one of the first episodes of the season because mm -hmm. this was opening weekend in mississippi um but uh but yeah you had to be back at this kind of central location by five o'clock and and uh, I know I know he and I talked about the hunt that we had when I busted that bird out off the limb within like right, nine right. seconds or something yeah. like that. And yeah, so, the day was pretty much over. Yeah, right off the bat. Yeah, so we just kind of hung out there. <laughs> right, right, right. And um, but I remember you know kind of trying to keep up with everybody else, trying to keep up with y'all and and stuff like that. And we ended up coming back to to kind of see what happened. But but before then, that's when y'all kind of got on. Yeah, that's when we got on pretty thick. It was probably. 
3.30. Um, what I ended up having to do was I, I left Taylor where we'd been calling the whole time pretty much and, and just kind of set, you know, showed her a little more of the rope. So hunting by herself, she's, you know, she's hunted a few times with me, but never by herself. Yeah. And, uh, I told her I was going to make a move and, and try and either cut them off or get up there with them or, or you know, not the style of hunting I'm used to. Mm -hmm. I pretty much had, had realized they're not going to yeah. come directly to me in a timely fashion that I need them to. And um, so pretty much I, I set her up and uh, I had my gobble tube out of my vest and left it laying there. And uh, I don't know if I ever used it or not. I just, I had it sitting there. And uh, so that was all she had it was a gobble tube and a 20 gauge. And, and half a sandwich. And half a sandwich. And she was, uh, she was set up and good. And she, you know, a little sleepy eyed too. Yeah. I don't know how that went for, but. Anyways, um, I, run, I I drop back into the woods a little further, um, get on the other side of a knoll, and I'm just, I, I cut a few times behind, and they, they'd answer me just about every time I'd hit, hit my mouth call. It wouldn't answer anything else except my, my mouth call. And um, at this point, I pre pretty much realized I was just gonna have to get them to shot gobble at, at me every time and just move every time that gobbled. And what was what was really odd about it, um, what was it? What was really odd about it um, was the sound of these turkeys, I believe was kind of getting thrown. They were, number one, they were across one of the fences on the property. The property, and then it was a creek. But since it has cows, they put the fence on this side of the creek and they they own, you know, own into those woods. Um, so I had a bob wire fence, a creek, and then it was a shelf ridge. I mean, and they were on top of that shelf ridge. And um, so I pretty much eliminated the idea of calling one off of that through a creek, yeah. through a fence into an open field that he could see from the top of that ridge. Um, so I skirted all the way to the, to the right of them in front of where they were headed, kind of similar to where they were headed to roost or where they roosted the morning before, or that mo actually that morning. Um, ended up, it was a bunch of finger ridges. I'm be belly crawling uh, across the creek, pretty much belly crawling rolling in between logs and stuff. And thank goodness I didn't come across a water moccasin yeah. or anything like that. Cause I would have been face to face with them. Um, pretty much cutting every 10 feet I went yeah. and just would, would pop, pop on my mouth call and they would answer. And I just kept moving, inching closer, inching and closer. Curtis, the guy was telling you where they are. You kind of have an idea that they're not interested in coming right. to you. Yeah, they weren't interested in coming yeah. to me at all, which is, 100, good. It's, yes. it's good at that point, but 100% opposite of how I've ever hunted yeah. in my life. And you know that. That's up your alley. But yeah, that's it's, how I it, like to kind of approach I was. This was the first for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is all the first time I've ever moved like this on a turkey, in all honesty. But I kind of felt like the need, you know, it was time to get it done kind of deal. Yeah. Close, the, close the deal if we, had, if we wanted to get back in time to... Yeah. You know, it wasn't about entering, but, you know, it would have been, it was nice to try. Yeah, at least you had a shot at Right, you know. at, at entering something, showing up with something. But um, pretty much after belly crawling over about 15 of those in and out, up and down of those, 15, those finger ridges, I was like, all right, I should be on him. And uh, so I pop up and roll onto a little pine tree and with my back against it. And I'm, you know, half squat leaning on that pine tree and, I hear them gobble one more time, and I'm in chest shaking. I, I, they should be 20 yards from me, and I can't see them. And I can see 60, 70 yards in, in front of me, and I hear putting, I hear, I mean, I hear multiple turkeys. I, I can't find them. Um, anyways, uh, by that time I hear footsteps coming up behind me, and four long beards that were gobbling had circled me and directionally thrown their gobble mm. in front of me somehow or another in there. Anyways, got one that 
15 yards to, to separate from the other ones. And at 15 yards, it's like shooting a 22 out of it. And I clipped one and went to running, chasing him, and put, ended up having to put two more in him. And it, I, I was, I, I was like that confused. I was running, yeah. I was out of breath, I was dry heaving. <laughs> I was wore out. And of course, you know, I looked down at my clock and it was like 4.31. Yeah. And we're 20 minutes from where we're supposed to be mm -hmm. at five. And we're 800 yards on the back of this property. Mm -hmm. But um, the landowner had a ranger up there and we called them and I run down, meet Taylor, of course. We high five and, and we're at both. She's confused. What's, yeah. She's heard three shots. She's, you know, hoping I got him. And of course I could just come barreling out of the woods across a creek with a turkey. She's just like, all right, let's go. And uh, so we start running as fast as we can and, and end up calling the landowner. They pick us up halfway. We get in the truck and run a Mach 90 all the way up there. And uh, which I had sent a few videos once we got in the truck yeah. to y'all to, to yeah, let us we know were, we were on the yeah. way. You know, y'all. We had already left, like, headed to the place, still the night. Cause we, I mean, we kind of, after that, we just kind of messed around and we're right. honestly looking around the place for, I mean, we were probably more worried about tomorrow. So yeah. it wasn't in the little deal mm -hmm. than we were, you know, after we kind of bumped them off the, the one guy that we knew about or assumed that one guy were there and we never really got on another one. So right. we were already headed back there when we, we got that video. And we were probably equally the same distance away. And I'm thinking he better be hauling if he thinks he's going to, you know, have a shot at getting there. But you know, we're able to get there and wound up doing some good in the turny side of things. And I remember you telling me, you know, going into the story, like, I think, you know, I had to kind of think back to some stuff that, you know, we had talked about before and stuff that, you know, you, you never just like dabbled into with the crawling around and having to reposition yeah. over and over again, which I know wasn't your cup of tea, but. But in all honesty, I mean, that's stuff, stories from stories you've mm -hmm. told me, you know, that's the way you hunt. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I just had to kind of think in your, and it was, it was odd, but I had to think in your mindset mm -hmm. of, you know, what would you do here? Um, or, or, you know, what would Honor do here? Mm -hmm. Not what would I do here? Because I would have sat on that tree and waited. But turn, I have killed him, but it would have been, you know. It turns out, once me and Taylor got back in the truck, the birds skirted the field really? and came into the field, and I actually caught them across the creek and fence and back up <laughs> the other way of where I tried to get on the other side of where they weren't going to come, you yeah. know, the whole time in my mind. But it worked out. I'm not complaining. Yeah, about it even worked out. I wouldn't change nothing. But that was that was how I kicked off my season, and that's pretty yeah. much how it rode out the rest of the season. Yeah. Um, but I uh, got on a handful of other birds, but yeah. could never connect on. So yeah, that real big one come in. Yeah, that one was a sore subject still. <laughs> nice he's, shot at it. He's still kicking. Yep, I think. not kicking, walking. He's yeah, he's <laughs> casually walking around. Yeah. Pecking bugs. Um, that'd be a one I shot the tree on. Yeah. But um, but that's a good kind of segue, I think, because that was in my mind, something I want to touch on. Um, that going back to that long beard, I know, I think I've mentioned it a few times on here, the I still stand by it being the biggest long beard I've ever seen in my entire life was he and I chasing our hunting together and one of those chase couldn't get a clean shot and I tried to get to go ahead to shoot and wound up shooting a dead tree that I wasn't, I thought for sure I was going to be able to get, get that pattern around, but I didn't. Um, and you thought you did until oh, about yeah. two minutes in, it feels like, yeah. or 30 seconds after. We felt like two hours. Yeah. Had to break that news to you. Because <laughs> that was a big turkey. That by far was, Yeah, I, I will vouch for that. That was probably the biggest turkey me or you have mm -hmm. ever Late night, I was somebody killed. I remember a neighbor killed him one, and me flagging him down probably like three weeks later. Oh, yeah. And trying to, you know, look at the back of his truck like, is this him? I just wanted to see it, you just, know? Yeah. Um, but it wasn't. Um, but regardless, we'll look back to that uh, situation towards the end of the story of 
of what of when you came up to Kansas, but I've been in Nebraska before heading back down to Kansas. Well, I've been to Kansas then to Nebraska. Right. And wound up killing that Miriam's first hunt, you know, in Nebraska. And that was uh, a pretty quick story to tell, I'll tell it, but, cause I mean, I mainly wanted you on here to, we can talk about that Kansas hunt, yeah, the Rio I, hunt. In all honesty, me, we, we, me and you haven't really talked about your Miriam. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I want to hear it. Yeah, you know, yeah, as soon as you I got up there, we went to hunting. Yeah, it was, it was, you know, straight business once I yeah. got there, so. But no, nah, the, the Miriam's was, um, was definitely something I always wanted to do, probably not near as much as I wanted to go to Florida or something like that and, you know, see the Osceola's, but when there was an opportunity or, or at least time to go if I wanted to, I wasn't going to just let it pass by. Um, being in Kansas and and just, you know, not really having a timeline to go by or, or uh, you know, a set time to be back, I thought might as well after shooting that hybrid and, and I was already in North Kansas. I, I knew I had to be around the the Miriam's country and wound up going a little too far almost to uh, South Dakota. <laughs> I think I did mention that part in the last episode of, of finding out. And I'm all the way down the like middle part, middle almost south part of Nebraska hunting Miriam's and I thought I had to be dang near South Dakota. Yeah. Some 2007 Google map said that and I just <laughs> went with it and drove through the night. I probably could have done a little more research on that but I mean again I'm in a world I ain't never been in out there. But um, but no, I, I found some, just found some public land and um, kind of just spent the the drive up there was long enough to do as much topo research as you can on a few of these areas and it was dark the whole time. Yeah. You know, when, I, when the terrain changed, so I really didn't know what I was getting into until the next morning when I got light driving out there. And, and uh, long story short, which it ain't a long story, it's a short story short I guess is um kind of stumbled up on these this little I thought it was a bachelor's group of of um just four or five long beards and well let me take that back I don't know if I'm calling Mary was long beards like I did Mississippi <laughs> long beards long beards because yeah, it's pushing it yeah I wasn't aware that their beards are a little shorter up there <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get in that a second but um but no nah, I uh came up on these birds and and I not by gobble I don't wind up seeing them and um and kind of backed out a little bit this is i probably hadn't been there and this is probably 10 30 that, that morning that first the first, that first hunt you know so it's, it's still morning time and it's it's i mean good weather i mean i was really blessed to to pick a week just randomly right. to do this and it and it'd be cooperative weather for the most part I and mean, there was a little rain in kansas but i mean i, I mean you can't beat that with stick no um it was nice it was uh, there. yeah and it was just like that in nebraska and and came up on this group and and kind of did one of those two steps back and make a big loop and just restart everything kind of I don't think they had heard me calling any before that and, and kind of looped around and and positioned myself on the same kind of it's like a little bit of a ridge I know it's it ain't many ridges like we think of down here it's like a it's just like a little incline kind of deal and, and finding trees was kind of the biggest part because everything's just it's like just all sage grass looking stuff. Oh, really? I don't, you know, I don't know terminology on the grass or anything, but hmm. a bunch of big fields, and I was in the, the sand hills, which kind of self explanatory. Bunch of sand <laughs> <laughs> and hills. Um, something to do with the wind blowing or something, I don't know. It creates these crater looking things, and vice versa, builds a hill. I didn't look into it that much. I just read a little thing on the pamphlet. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> Y'all didn't know um, how sand hills were made? They're yeah. made of sand and they're in hill form. That's about as far as I got. Then I started looking for creeks and didn't find any of those. So, um, well, I take that back on a couple of creeks. These just happen not to be by one. Um, but I was trying to follow, you know, just some trees that they could roost in, which way could they walk and get to water, get to food and stuff like that. And just kind of started adding all these parameters into each other. and. I don't know if it was from prior planning, you know, really coming together, the spot I picked, or if it was just blind luck. And I'm a big believer in blind luck, so I'm not gonna count that out. I just haven't picked a good spot that there was turkeys in on public land I ain't never been to. Sometimes that just happens, you know. Oh, yeah. sure. um, you can't just say, I mean, just the die hards and 
really experienced, just know where to go. Sometimes it is luck, you know. One hundred percent. And I'll give credit to luck all day. Um, when you come up on them like that, and and knowing that they probably didn't see you or hear you, and you can kind of for the the as often as they see you first. Sometimes you just see them first, and you can make the first move, and and um, and luckily I was able to get kind of exactly where I wanted to get. Kind of, and I got above them. There was a, in a place where it's nothing but just flat land. I was able to get above them. And oh, really? Walk up here. I mean, it's just stuff like that. You know, you're just kind of like, it just kind of worked out. Yeah, exactly. Um, wound up set. I probably set up three times. Of course, like you mentioned, I, I do reposition a lot quicker than probably most anybody would. Um, if I can, I am. And um, first time I set up. Winds howling. I'm talking 45 mile an hour howling. Like Absolutely. not like howling down here. It's like literally like I'm trying to hold on to some stuff. Um, but uh, but was able to call a couple times when it died down. I don't know if they heard it or not. Didn't get a response. Kind of got a little edgy there on moving without really knowing exactly where they were. Cause it had been a good 30 minutes since I'd seen them. I knew there wasn't a but a few places they could go and. Uh, and kind of I guess bust me you know right. so as long as I did, avoided getting in those spots I, I knew I was all right regardless of where they were and, and wound up getting probably 15-ish 15 yards on a round of some big rock looking thing or something it was able to call it you know I know they heard it and they gobbled back and they might have been 75 yards oh yeah but it was cool just to hear one gobble and stuff like that and, and wound up on and went back and forth with them there for a second. Probably got three gobbles out of it, just really soaking it in. Like, I cannot believe, you know, I'm here and Miriam's here with no expectation. On, I don't even go in this half of the country, much less getting on Miriam's. Right. And then much less, like, kind of soaking in. Like, I might have shot a kill on one of these, oh, you yeah. know? Oh, yeah. Um, do I hunt these like I would a swamp bottle meester? Or do I, you know, I, I've never even thought to ask somebody on any tips. And, um, Wound up kind of just playing it just like I would around here and and uh, and, and got on it and then got quiet and sure enough just just kept the patience and had that I think I could hear I could hear some drumming so I knew they were close um, and you're set up by a big rock is that what you said I kind of went around a big rock okay and there's a bunch of cedars up there so right. there are trees and cedars yeah it smells awesome. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. But um, but that's kind of what when I say a tree, that's usually what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, kind of, I mean, there's like limbs all the way to the ground. It's kind of hard to find a spot to see it because right. you're in you're in the, in the in tree. The tree. Yeah. So I wound up kind of sitting on this rocky looking, just covered in straw. So it's hard not to slide. But it is really quiet. So I found that out oh, yeah. after I got that when I was just talking about I heard a drum and I kind of caught a glimpse of something. I couldn't tell. I knew, it was a turkey. I didn't know what what it was. Um, wound up there were hens with them. It wasn't a bachelor's group like I thought. Um, there was only I think three three gobblers and a few hens. I never really got a chance to count. But yeah. But um. But I wound up once I saw that I kind of knew where they were, and um, and I knew if I went left or right, I don't remember which way it was. I could I could make a little bit of a move. And it, well, here's what it was. It was him kind of, it was him spinning, you know, when they mm -hmm. do that strut circle looking thing and a half moon kind of pushing a, pushing hinge or yeah. something like that, pushing Jake's off. Um, it was just one of them loops and it was the, it was the back end of, of one of their tail fans. So I was able to kind of slide down and I was thinking mid slide, like, man, this is amazing. Cause usually, you know, if we're crawling around in the, you know the bottoms around here so loud you're having to try to find some mud to get in so you can be quiet and down there you literally like push off and just slide on the pine straw i'm like man i could slide for days out here <laughs> the wind's so loud they can't hear you and you just slide so fluently i'm i'm thinking man i've never stopped crawling around here okay. um but got got kind of went down came back up on the hill called one more time they didn't answer i wasn't worried about it about 15 minutes later um they kind of walked down a, a little, just a little bit of a dip. One of them would come back up. I couldn't tell what it was. And then the one I'd been seeing strutting. I mean, I was looking at him. At, I forgot to mention this. When, during that mid slide, while I'm thinking in the back of my mind how easy it is, I look up and one, I just see a chalk white head looking at me in full strut. And just, they're so black and just oh, stuck yeah. out so big. Um, and I thought, I remember thinking like that. This is 
worth it. I don't care about shooting or not. You know, like right. that was that was awesome. Just being able to see just that one glimpse he turned and I saw I mean it was just a Miriam strutting in front of me probably sixty yards. Yeah. And I, he didn't see me. But it was really cool to just see him right there because in these between these two seaters in the shadow. Um wound up kind of just setting up right there, just kind of scooted on up to one of those trees and until he came on out and uh saw the full fan and, and cut a couple of times enough for him to go out strut stick his head up. But um but yeah I ran up to him and like they got like a seven inch beer or seven and a half inch beer and I'm thinking like okay now like <laughs> I just saw this turkey have a full fan. Right. Um of course, I mean, I mean, we're used to like a full fan, give like pretty much at least nine inches, at least nine, nine to eleven, you yeah. know. And um, and the whole seven and a half inch beer kind of threw me for a loop. But then I, the more people I talked to said, "No, that's, that's pretty normal." Yeah, I'm thinking, all right, whatever. Which full fan at six inches, game so on. Legal, I ain't worried legal. about it after that. But a legal bird. Yeah, you know, it did kind of throw me for a loop there. I had, to, I had to pull his fan back out to make sure he didn't like, you know, stick his head down. And another, I, I mean, I've seen scenarios where that happens where the strutter sticks his head down and one behind him, if you didn't know, was there, sticks his head I back watched, up. I watched it firsthand. Brick did it one time. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, it does. It does happen. But no, that wound up being the the bird I was I was going for. And so with that being the first morning before lunch, really. I came on down, like I said, I, yeah. I got another tag just in case and wound up not really doing much and came on down the next day and met you and and we did some riding around and door knocking, which I did. I had a day, I had a day as you were driving. Yeah, when I was driving, you made it there, you were what, a couple hours from where we yeah. ended up being, so yeah, I mean, I, I was 14 hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you called me after you killed the Miriam and just... I was off for the week. I had taken off just because I had some vacation days to burn. Mm -hmm. And in all honesty, I'd pretty much gotten out of the turkey groove. Yeah. I, I'd put up all my stuff, and I, you know, I kind of you, you kind of almost had to talk me into you yeah. know coming up and and all that. So when I the night before, I needed this is mm -hmm. where my story kind of started. I don't know. I'm going to jump in on that yeah. just yet, but I uh, decided to. Changed my oil that night after you. Well, it's probably what ten o'clock when you called. Probably good ten o'clock. Nine ten o'clock. So I'll start changing my oil at ten thirty, eleven o'clock, so I can jump on the road first thing in the morning. And of course, I break a part of the the canister filter, mm -hmm. and I was not in the best. <laughs> I was probably not the best person to be around there for a little while. So. uh called dad and I was like hey I don't have a ride yeah can you be here as early as you can in the morning I got to run to the parts house get this this oil filter part and uh pray they have one yeah. you know and somehow or another they did got it slapped it on the next morning probably got out of there about nine o'clock and it said I was gonna arrive at like one at one a.m mm -hmm. and I was like here we go by myself it's gonna be a long ride um so yeah, you had probably from nine o'clock that next morning until uh, till dark to do some scouting. Yeah. Um, you were kind of giving me some updates what you're seeing, which didn't seem like a ton. I mean, yeah, I remember I, were few and far between. I wound so, up yeah. kind of doing a little bit of looking around at some certain areas, just just um, checking different spots, different you know public lands, we highs, whatever. And, and came up on a few that I thought were pretty good and, and wound up not seeing much there. And I think made the executive decision about dark that night to drive a good two and a half hours west to drive one in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, just slept there at the at the place pretty much in my truck again and, and woke up and got to hunting slash scouting. Um, I still have one Kansas tag and and we were in some sure enough Rio country and and wanted to kind of get a feel for that and wasn't much there. Um was a pretty place. I think there definitely was turkeys there. They just, you know, just it's last a bit of the season. I'm sure it was a pretty commonly hit place. But um but but no, then it, I, it wasn't until I finally just picked a town for you to meet me. I, I headed south to meet you because right. you were going to be so late after you had, yeah. you know, kind of, you know, redone everything on the truck and 
and kind of re unpack, repack kind of deal and kind of bumped you back a few hours. And so I headed south. I was going to meet you yeah, there. And I yeah. said, we'll just pick a place around here to go check in the morning. And we'll go back up to where I know there was birds at earlier this week. Right. But I, I, I've unchecked a couple places pretty much for us, at least if nothing more to not worry with. And, um, and wound up on the way to that town, I saw a good many on this one strip of road. I don't remember what the road was called. I should have written it down. Yeah. It was a, I, I wound up seeing three or four here, three or four long beers here. And then I saw two more here and just strutting around in these pastures and, and, and crops and people's yards. And, you know, it was kind of like, where is this coming from? You know, I'd spent the past day and a half after coming down from Nebraska, not seeing anything. I knocked on a few doors, wound up knocking on uh, some guy's door. It was probably right smack between where I was and where I was headed to that morning before. Yeah. Um, then it was to meet you. Um, knocked on his door. He had some in, in this kind of field down by his, well, it wasn't his house. I mean, it wasn't his field, but it was near his house. And I wound up going up there to ask him, you know, if anybody was hunting, if he cared if we hunted it uh, the next day. And he told me, you know, you know, that man, that ain't my land. Um, he told us no, and uh, he said no in other words. Yeah. So yeah, we weren't gonna hunt it. So yeah. pretty much, that was a a little bit of a blow, and, and I think I tried a couple more spots, not far from there, honestly, probably thirty minutes down the road. Never got either, never got an answer, or couldn't get the right phone number to call, or something like that. And and uh, I mean, that was on honestly the only one I had physically been able to talk to was a guy that didn't own the place and I was like what about around here you know right. and he was like still no so he probably didn't own the place he just wanted to be, he was trying to be nice or something I don't know well, yeah <laughs> either way he wasn't having it but um but no we uh we got out on see was that the first day we hunted yes it was yeah. okay yeah because it was not the greatest weather I remember that was when the weather started turning because it was getting dark here and there and yeah we uh the morning was a wash i feel like the morning was a wash we stayed in the truck yeah. just riding and I, I hadn't seen a turkey and like all day i mean yeah. well we saw that one in in town and literally in across the baseball field yeah. in town. <laughs> as and, soon as we get in the truck and which of course that was not gonna not i mean it was in city limits we couldn't yeah. we couldn't <laughs> even hunt him so we thought about calling kansas state and asking that's whose property it wound up being was kansas state yeah, university yeah, it was it was one of their yeah, one of their ag fields, agri research centers or something. So, everybody's but, gonna be googling Kansas City. <laughs> I mean, Kansas City yeah. agri research center. Um, yeah, y'all didn't hear that from us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> drive down the dang highway and find it. You can find it. Um, um, that's why they're there, I imagine. Right. But, but anyways, we uh, yeah, we kind of jumped ship, drove what was an hour, two hours. Yeah. Um, just bouncing. Pretty close to where you seen that you know it was the day before kind of that area yeah and jumped down there and then um what was it we we passed by there and we were in separate trucks because we didn't know where we we'll to stay that night right. you know if we kind of got into and we didn't want to go back an hour and a half to go get one of our trucks and come back right so uh you were just kind of following me i think i, I was either on the phone with you or we pulled over to, i was telling you about this is where i saw those yesterday i was just going to you know, point yeah, it out we had pulled over yeah about a mile up the road you'd kind of so we're, me. we're about to pass through where I saw a lot. So if you see some, let me know. And we'll, if it's somewhere that I hadn't, you know, tried to contact, let me know when I pull over and try to call them. Um, wound up getting all the way to the end of the road. Didn't didn't see any. Just rode until we hit the next highway, and we stopped. And I stopped to get something like a cooler or something like that. And I didn't really have another plan. That was kind of the last one. Was like hope. Hopefully yeah. they've moved over somewhere and we you know, can see them. If not, we're gonna have to go and just hope we can find one before they roost right. for the next morning. If not, we're gonna go in blind. And that's just that's I mean, that's how a lot of it happens, but it's not a good feeling to know I have no idea. Right. It's even where a turkey to honey is. Yeah, definitely not fourteen yeah. hours from home either. Exactly. And that's yeah. what I'm kinda of getting worried about was he just drove fourteen hours and we don't I don't even, you know, know where one is. Um after confidently telling him, I feel like we can find one. Right, right. right. Um, but, but I was out there. I wasn't out there yeah. necessarily for that. I was there to just use some days and, yeah. and you know see some new country and and say I'd hunted. You yeah, know, new that you know Kansas. I'd never hunted Kansas. Mm -hmm. I'd never been through Oklahoma or Kansas. Yep. Or 
you know, in the whole trip. I mean, yeah, I, Missouri, I, yeah, Missouri, North Arkansas. I've never been through the Ozarks and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So I mean, I got to see a lot of new stuff. That was what the main reason I was out there. Yeah, and that, we got to see a good bit. And that's the first time I've seen like a lot of that too. Yeah. Um, but anyways, but, uh, but no, I ended up whipping around right there. I said, "Screw, it, we're gonna go back." And there was one one house I thought about, and I've been thinking about this the day before. There's a place. Yeah, it's not even on the same road we had just taken, kind of. But there was some property that touched the land that I saw the birds on, and we didn't see the birds. But I was thinking, man, that, I know there's a house there because I remember, you know, just zooming in on one of the the apps and and seeing that there was a, a dwelling of some kind. Could have been mm -hmm. a barn, could have been a house. I don't know. That's it. it was way off the road. You couldn't see it from the road. Yeah, and I, I was like, you know, I'm not gonna just gonna keep on going. I'm gonna turn around. I'm gonna go see what this is. Sure enough, it was this little house. We uh we pull up in there, knock on the door. Uh, what was her name? Do you remember? Oh goodness, Karen, Carol, something. It, it was Karen or Carol. I don't I remember. remember. But I think some, it was Karen because I made I made the joke <laughs> once, once we left. We, you know, so yeah, I remember you saying something. First time I'll say thank you, Karen. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we uh, she she opened the door and she said um, she pretty much knew why we were knocking on the door. Yeah. We were in um, full camouflage. Yeah, which is not a good approach. Uh, most times, you don't really want to go knock on the door in camouflage. It looks like you're expected to say yes, and that kind of puts them in a different... We'll go into the door knocking on a whole new episode. That'd be right. one of them series. Yeah. Um, how to approach that through coyote hunting. Um, <laughs> the winter prior, get some good access. Uh-huh. But, um... Anyways, she... But she said, yeah, y'all can hunt this little quadrant of their property yeah, which was right. not the one touching that the one we were hoping for right but lo and behold we wind up going out there because at this point this is our best hope or yeah. chance what, of you two, know two o'clock probably two o'clock yep. yeah yeah two o'clock we wind up kind of getting to huntable spot at 2 30 and we're we wound up bouncing back and forth for some like for some reason I ran. You, you I went, went back, back to get something. I went back to the truck to get something. I don't remember what it was. And you had to retie your boots. So I, always, I left you. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. And when you retie the boots. Literally when I opened my door, I heard yow, 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 a mm -hmm. hen across the street. And I was like, that's odd. You mm -hmm. know, and I I kind of froze for a minute. I mean, it, <laughs> just, she, I'm, don't want to slam the truck door, but you're like, at the truck, it doesn't yeah. matter what you do. You're, you're 100 yards <laughs> yeah. on the wrong side of the street. Yeah. And I'm Boy, I had a, standing I, I, at I a truck. Hear them, yeah. yeah, you couldn't hear them because of the I guess because of the wind and everything. Well, and, a long well, way away. away. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I just like grabbed what I had to grab real quick and eased the door shut and I'm having to walk away from turkeys yeah. and like I don't know where they're at. I just heard one. Well, they were ended up being kind of Kind of, they're on the same property as I've seen them the day before, just in a different spot. And, right. And pretty much, the play at hand was, all right, we had to call it, because that wasn't even kind of close to where we could hunt. We had to somehow just pray these boss calls got loud enough to, to draw them close enough mm -hmm. to hear enough to come across a black top, well, it wasn't a black top, whatever kind of yeah, rock road that dirt was. Road, yeah. yeah. I thought a creek, they had to come through God knows what, to get on the, at least a huntable property. Right. And then to come to, you know, come in like a normal hunt, which was a very long shot and we knew it. And um, it took six hours, but yeah. it, I mean, just back and forth. And when I say it took everything, it took, we had every call laid out, strode out. We'd walked, somehow walked a mile and never really got out of this little pasture. Yeah, we trying just, to just act like loops. turkeys and call maybe if i can call oh, i tried to try to crawl try to call try to get up on top of something and call as hard as i could that way just to make it sound like just a turkeys were leaving playing I chess guess. with them yeah. yeah make them walk down their their own side of the property and then they could hear it better and come across i don't know i was trying everything oh, I we, could. yeah we were pulling every car oh, yeah. we could and and i mean this is one of those they wouldn't budge me and you like my style of hunting and your yeah. style of hunting could not neither yeah neither of them would work they were um, combined and at the same time and i'm getting frustrated i know you're getting frustrated and and we know it's probably our last chance um because we're headed back the next day and 
this was it. We're probably, and she specifically, specifically said you yeah. can't hunt it in the morning. Yeah, she said she was putting horses on it yep. the next morning, so we couldn't, we could only hunt it that night, that yep. afternoon. And, uh, and we didn't hear none on, the, on their side of the road. We problem. never did, never did. We um, took breaks to go listen on them. Yeah, we would, yeah, we'd leave the birds that were gobbling just because they were so hung up, which they had, uh, I yeah. guess they had hens. I mean, heard hens, so yeah. I mean, they were with hens. Um, and they had to cross a freaking a blacktop road by a truck. I mean, yeah. they had to. It had been pretty tough. Yeah, yeah, it was to call them in. Every odd was against us at this point. I feel like, um, but yeah, we walked that whole place just trying to strike another turkey that you know may have been out mm -hmm. of ear, out of out of earshot. Before, you know, before we finally just yeah. sat down as pretty much at the setup spot beat. we could get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were just whooped. And we just sat there and cranked on it, and one would be watching through the binoculars, one would be calling, it. and yeah. I'd be like, "All right, he didn't, you know, he, they heard that, you know, because I mean, there's still a good piece of way. Oh, yeah. They would walk to this certain corner every now and then, and treed, and yeah. and look down in there, wouldn't see nothing, and um, I thought eventually, you know, eventually one of them walked close enough where I'm, I'm thinking, I know he's seen across the road. Mm -hmm. He's not like enough to. If he was gonna be scared by the road, he would have. He wouldn't still be there. So he knows this rock road kind of deal going between it. I'm, I'm starting to feel a little optimistic that he's checked it out enough to feel comfortable crossing it. Right. You know, which um, I'm sure they do it all the time. But not being from there, you don't know. Um, and then I think what was it? We wound up kind of just sitting next to each other, facing down this kind of a slope, same kind of slope, hill looking thing. And just um, and just kind of doing all we could to get them across. Yeah. And finally, I remember I was kind of on my knees behind you, and um, we didn't have much of a plan as far as what if they do break. Yeah. But um, but we were both kind of on the same page, just hung with each other for so long. I saw them. I saw them kind of walk towards the woods, and I saw the hens going in the woods, and I saw a couple guys going in the woods, and I saw a couple just stand up down. I thought. There is a chance. Oh, yeah. All right, so these didn't go with this group. They probably still have us in mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. yada yada. What was it? Three? I think three. Three or four. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a, I mean, it's a big group of turkeys, but three of them stayed up there. And I didn't call any more. I don't think did we? I don't think we did. Maybe but if we did, it was very little of them as yeah. far away from us as we could yeah I don't or you know turn the other direction and call once i kind of i was kind of pretty confident they were you yeah, went intentionally once, separating from that group once you saw them we didn't call yeah. anymore I, I remember that i remember that and so i just kind of i started kind of easing back down a good 20 yards above you probably on that hill yeah and i start kind of just easing down and, and telling you like i don't want to get your hopes up but like i think they're at least interested might that they might really do this yeah and then um i just kind of sit there and i peek back up and they I didn't, I never saw them kind of commit. I just said, get ready just in case, because I'm still kind of looking in front of us in case this big group, you know, does mm -hmm. the same, yeah. which I wasn't expecting to, but we're sitting there just kind of not far from twiddling our thumbs, thinking, just hoping for the best, and I wasn't going to risk busting them going right. back up there to look. And where we're sitting, we can't see yeah. across the road at all. I mean, we can see our side of the property. Chase's shoulder is it. touching the property line, and he is, is touching like this big line of cedars that you cannot see through unless you get up. You have to walk 20 yards up to see get across, get across the bush, not like to see yeah. far, mm -hmm. but we were having to look far. Um, but literally, you couldn't see across them until it got way down there. And if we walked down there, we were going to bust them regardless. Right. Yeah, they would be able to see us. Mm -hmm. So we're sitting there a little bit anticipating, and it would be cool if a turkey did walk across this, but we're not really banking on it at this point. Right. But um, but we played our cards as best as we could, and we knew, you know, curiosity would have gotten then, if ever, you know, when they didn't go with that other group. And, and sitting there, and you said something. Chase is sitting on my left. I'm sitting on his right. And his his right shoulder is touching my left shoulder, and his left shoulder is touching these, you know, this line of cedars that we're hoping they kind of walk across. Right. And I'm sitting there, you know, we both have our gun somewhat, you know, and facing front. Um, and last place we called was down at the bottom of this hill, mm -hmm. hoping hoping to pull them down. Right. And happen to walk through these, you know, this one gap in cedars and. And turns out, uh, you ended up. What you, you said? You heard some flap, some something flying. I heard either something flop flop or the you know, creek on the other side. That's what I was I thinking. I thought I heard one. Yeah, fly across that creek or something. I heard something flap. 
and I yeah. said, I think I heard one either fly up or fly across that creek. I don't remember what and it was. I remember because when you said that, my spirit really started singing. I, went, I was thinking that you did, hear, you did yeah. hear him fly across. You did hear him fly because I knew there was a creek there. I don't know if you knew there was a creek there yet. Yeah, and but I, I, yeah. I hadn't looked at the maps mm -hmm. all day. And I thought, yep, yeah, that was, you did. Yeah. I'm sure they're flying across that creek to go head over there to Bruce later and on. I, what was it about that time I heard? Yeah, no, I got up. I, no, oh, I, got yeah. up. I turned around. I don't know if you knew I did, because I, I, I was, was, no, I was uh, still trying to find a gap in those mm -hmm. trees that I could see, you know, yeah. where they were coming from, you know, you just know, trying you, to get a glimpse. You think they're kind of just, you want to check and make sure they are gone before you stand up and right. start packing our stuff up and heading out. But, um, but I'm, I'm a little bit behind you enough to kind of just, just lay down on my side and kind of shimmy up and look pretty much just move these you know, yeah right? and i look and it, there's three of them 15 yards oh, yeah. looking dead at me walking you know it already caught across this road kind of walking it directly towards where we just call it and i just shut these bushes like <laughs> shutters and just shimmy yeah. back down and i tell you i said they're coming and you're kind of like i was like no they're not what? kind of you know i'm sure you know yeah but but I'm kind of sitting there like, no, I'm serious. Like, they're about to walk up yeah. exactly where we hoped they would. And what was it? And they're looking and... One popped out? One, yeah, one kind of popped out. Because I am I can I can hear them, I think, because I know they're there. Yeah. You don't know they're there. I so didn't know exactly where they were, yeah. And they're doing that little whine. Like, we, 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 you know, mm -hmm. just kind of just as they yeah, take around. I never heard that. And but. I promise you, they were eight yards on the other side of that. Yeah. That, that wall of seizures looking and stuff. I, that's how thick this stuff was. Oh, I, yeah. I, I was eight yards from these turkeys and couldn't even see them or hear them because I didn't see them. Yeah, and I'm so. sitting here going, you know, getting nervous. And Chase is the one supposed to be shooting, and I'm still just nervous. Cause I'm like, I mean, you get that close to a turkey after yeah. six hours of hunting, like your heart rate's up. And then, and they start kind of skirting this area and to walk back down. And you, the plan me and you had was to let them come let, in. You know, as they come through, you know, get two on our side of the property line first. You will get the the first one that crosses that and gets on us, on and good. then the other one gets on us good. You know, I, so I'll be shooting the back one, right? And you'll be shooting the front one, um, which would have been the you would have shot the right one, I would have shot mm -hmm. the left one. Um, and after the first one came through, man, they were out there a decent poke. I mean, it was a good shot. Um, yards, yeah, 45, 40, 50 45. yards at least. Um, and we're in different the terrain. End of it. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm like, Hunter, get on him, get on him. You know, whenever I can get another one to come through, or when I see another one mm -hmm. get good and on us, we'll be able to, you know, we'll be able to shoot. You just give me the cue when you got it. When, you, when I got a shot, let's roll. Because you can't even see across the line. I mean, I, if no, you can see a bird, period, or either one of us, if we could see the bird, it was on us. It's a good 40 yards on our side. Right. So. So, anyways, I'm sitting there and, and I hear the, the birds I'm waiting on start putting mm -hmm. and they're headed the other direction. And you see them and they're headed. And I saw a glimpse of them and they were on the other side. They were headed down the road or the little glimpses I could see in the white, I could see of the road, mm -hmm. the white of the dirt of the road, I could see they were going not our direction. Mm -hmm. And I said, go ahead and shoot that one. And, and I don't either, know if you thought I could see one or not. I, I just no, I knew because I could I could hear the putting, you know, and where it was in relation to this one was not, not close yeah, enough. Like they they they're the ones we were. I was hearing back here, and this one was already the mm -hmm. first one I saw. He was right up there almost. And almost. so by the time he heard the putting, he'd already you know he was already on the place. Yeah, you know, I could have shot him before, mm -hmm. but I, we were waiting on those other ones who probably heard us or saw us or something knew something wasn't up and kind of hang hung back. Right. Um. So and I somehow you you weren't able to see this one because once he he heard it he started going up and yeah. that was kind of in line. To, yeah, you got behind some you know, other because you were able to see through the stuff. I couldn't see through it, but I could see around it, and you couldn't see around it to shoot. I could see through the stuff down. Yeah, from us. I mean, once they angle. got way down, yeah, it was it was it was weird. It was a I, <laughs> it's it sounds like we're you know crisscrossing yeah. what we're saying, but it's, it's hard to it you. really is just a confusing little spot we're sitting <laughs> sitting at. <laughs> I, I mean, can't explain it any better. Though. Three feet, uh, Hunter's yeah. two feet to my right, and can't see half the yeah. stuff I can see, and I can't see the whole turkey that he's about to shoot hardly. Yeah. Um, I mean, this it's, it's wild. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard to wrap your head the, around. The the line goes, 
and then it'll stop a little ways and then it'll go like yeah. it'll be thick and then kind of sparse with the cover part right. of this it's like a fence line looking deal yeah or it's got posts in it i don't know if that had fence in it but it has posts in it because that's what we were kind of leaning on for a second and it wasn't but about four feet tall like i don't know yeah it's, i don't know if they they say trim some of them mm -hmm. like head high and that's where we would you know those little spots he i don't know if they're preparing to build a fence or what but that's where we could see them you know it was i don't know it was weird some but, of it was trimmed some of it wasn't some of it was thick some of it was thin <laughs> and it all depended on the, the angle, angle yeah. you could you could look we not could you could see there straight and through neither of us could see the same thing i remember that it was and we were like when hunter shot we were i mean i was just kind of confused and <laughs> i was just like i don't know what happened but i know what happened yeah. it was it was it wasn't we weren't expecting it to happen period yeah we were but, thinking um, it was going to be if they we, we were kind of blown away that it we had a turkey in, oh, yeah. in you know in that's so that long working them and, and just getting um after that long working them After that long working them and, and and not panning out, you don't expect it to pan out. But right. But um. But when he told me to go ahead, I said I can, I can kill because he he put it at the time and started walking, you know, kind of down. And he was already like you said at that forty five yard. I mean, he, he was have ten more yards where he was out of range. And I said, you got him. And you said, I don't, I don't see him or I, I ain't got a clear shot. And I'm on the right, so I can see just a little bit extra to the left. But right. I knew when he gets to here. One of them needs to shoot because I, when I can't see him, I know you ain't gonna be able to see right. him. And so then my nerves really kick in because at the same time, yes, this is gonna complete a single season Grand Slam mm -hmm. done deal. This is a you know gold tip Rio. And I've got the Osceola Eastern and Miriams and uh, and hybrid, you know, yeah. and um, just didn't have a gold tip Rio, which I wasn't that worried about. I feel like that of all, of course, of all the birds, the to keep you from getting a single season there, so there's a, a dang Rio. A dinky Rio. <laughs> yeah, you can get on about kill on, you know, as easy as any of them, they usually. So. They say so. <laughs> but a turkey's a turkey, and um, they'll all humble you in their own ways, and that would have been a grand entrance of humbling from a Rio to be the one to keep you from getting a grand slam, which I didn't care about. But um, but at the same time, it, it would be nice to, Absolutely. to be uh, an authentic, kind of way to claim it instead of claiming a hybrid um and chase told me go ahead and you know if i got a shot take it and um so i was a little i was a little bit nervous about that like i mean if i, if I blow this i'm not gonna get the grand slam i wasn't worried about that but circling back to the first story was when the nerves really kicked in was the last time you told me i don't have a shot take <laughs> it i shot the damn tree yeah and so i'm thinking man if he if he gives me this shot after he drove 14 hours and you will. And you could have probably just done this big long swing lunge and yeah. take a shot. You know, I could have rolled around and you could have got a, you know, on top of, you know, shot over my shoulder or something. We could have made it work just to get you a bird. Like say, I didn't have a tag. Or but I, if you, I mean, you know me, I yeah. wasn't there to right. leave with a turkey. Right. I was there to hunt turkeys and that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And that's what we were doing. Yeah. And I, hey, I, I just wanted one of us to get one by the end of it. You know, it would have been nice. Heck yeah. And, and, and when that kind of replayed my mind last time he'd said those words, I whiffed on it. I was thinking, all right, you can't whiff on this one. <laughs> and luckily it didn't. And, uh, I may not have would have talked to you yeah. for the rest of the trip if that would have been happening. It yeah, would have happened. I in all honesty, I, I would have. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. have felt too good either, in all honesty. Yeah, that would have, have been a rough ride home. But, um, but luckily it happened. The Grand Slam was completed and kind of got your trust back on my shooting abilities after that one whiff on the biggest bird we'd ever seen you know you know hunter I, that's probably the first turkey i've seen you kill and mm. you know watch you shoot and i i don't even remember the last yeah. turkey I, I where i hunted with you and, and you shot yeah I, or connected yeah i guess you <laughs> could say you see me shoot i saw you shoot that one time uh, uh, i connected it just wasn't the bird it wasn't the bird um no, I that's probably the, the first mm -hmm. one in at least five or six years that I was with you. Um, I can think more we kids going out to Texas or something. Yeah, but was, usually y'all were the ones hunting. Once I got older, it was like, it was right. a break. Yeah. And um, 
And I, cause I would hunt in Mississippi a little more than y'all would right. just being older. And, you know, and if I'd killed one period, it was y'all shot from the get go. Right, right. Even if I hadn't somehow it wound up coming back around to y'all shot. <laughs> Most times then it wound up being just break shot every time. Yeah, it was pretty much yeah, break <laughs> shot. Break shot all the time. Our shot, my shot when it wasn't your shot. Yeah, you know, and that kind of went down. It was down your here. shot when it wasn't my shot after break shot. Exactly. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yeah. So I guess this makes up for it. Just finally getting the, the go ahead on Rio and, and luckily it was one to to complete something is, is I mean it is cool to kill a single season Grand Slam. I don't want to be disingenuous on the, the feet. I know a lot of people would love to do that and I'm thankful for it and blessed and not uh not shallow and saying some of it had to do with luck, especially on that mirror. You, you know, Absolutely. you gotta have luck to kill turkeys. I don't care what you say, how good you are. Um but it came together. I'm glad it did and um yeah, it was it was special for sure. Yeah, it was a big moment. Wouldn't want to share with anybody else, um, but uh, yeah, I was that was well worth fourteen hours yeah. in all honesty. Um, we may fight and bicker all the time. Yeah, if y'all, yeah. if you know us, <laughs> you know we're arguing with one another because we're bit. we're the left and the right side of the minded. Oh yeah, left and right minded, and they don't mix too well. But. Sometimes, but sometimes they pay off. Yeah, they work sometimes together. they do, and those sometimes are good times. So, um, but we appreciate y'all listening us to ramble on our last storytelling so-so type uh, type episode. Got got that out, and I think we've covered every story that's been requested. So, for those that did ask for certain stories and certain, you know, just want to hear about certain hunts, we appreciate that. And and those who didn't, y'all probably still ain't listening. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. always a something there but but um but for those that are continuing to listen in um and have reached out with uh with feedback or questions or or certain requests we definitely appreciate them as we do listen to them and, and we're about to meet y'all more than ever on some of these specific topics because um it's gonna be a little less rambling in the future gonna be a little more substance to uh to the to the topics and to the situations and and what y'all really want to hear with guests and, and specific guests. I mean, you know, experts, not what we think. I'm talking, you know, we might try to get some biologists and and um and just people who just straight up gurus on certain subjects and get them on here. Cause I wanna learn the stuff too. Um that's, Man, that's you a, both. yeah, that's a that's a big big goal of mine this off season to learn as much as possible on stuff like, you know, trapping and and burning and and all that stuff and we're gonna get some guys that really know what they're talking about so um that and and, and some other smaller companies we're gonna get them on here and, and kind of anything we think is gonna add value to the turkey hunt we're gonna get them on here and help them display that to the proper audience and and we think y'all get a lot of benefit from it so send in any of those topics any of those guest requests um be sure to kind of keep up to date with some of the stuff going on the website, we're kind of doing an overhaul on the design and part of it, adding some new stuff, gonna be adding a good bit of products here soon. We got a lot of big projects keeping me up at night already. Mm -hmm. It's already spring 2022 and I mean, full throttle in June, I would never have expected that, but but already working for next year and it's gonna be a good year. Um, so again, we appreciate y'all listening in um, and um, and be sure to, to follow along on all the socials and um, and subscribe to the podcast episodes we might be throwing some extra episodes out here and there pretty shortly um throughout the summer just some as they come we're gonna get them out there to you so be expecting that i'd say and um we appreciate y'all listening to the spring legion podcast we'll see you next time that was long yeah. an hour it's hard to get we suck at getting to the point <laughs> and wait until we stop